Always funny. Uh, coming to the stage, our next uh, comedian is actually a lawyer during the day. Would you please welcome to the stage with a little bit of applause, guys, and some music, Mr. Doug X. I'm in my 40s and I'm single, so as you might expect, I got some strong opinion about superhero movies. Like, Marvel's really killing it, put a lot of movies out, like Infinity War, Endgame, and my opinion about it is that is, uh, I really like Deadpool too. Um, basically, I'm saying fuck Endgame. Um, and uh, whatever. All right, but because time machines should not be integral to the plot. All right, time machines should be reserved for like, frivolous activities like Bill and Ted's Excellent Adventure. Really, your time machine should only be used for high school book reports. Bill and Ted. Well, Stallions, <laughs> this is the late night nerd alert, right? All right, um, so it's true though, um, I am a lawyer, and um, a lawyer is a profitable, prestigious, great career to have back in 2007. <laughs> Unfortunately, I graduated law school in 2010. So uh, it was secret comedy, and timing. Yeah, I don't got that for law either. Just really, just graduated into like the great recession, you know. The first year I got there before, the, by 2007, there was like 150 employers came to there. 2000, when I graduated, there was like eight employers and four of them were the public defenders. <laughs> so I did get into a career in, crim in criminal, hi criminal law. And uh, like I said, I didn't do it for the money because there's not much money in law these days. But I did it because I have passion, a belief, even a calling to keep drunk drivers on the road. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> drink it up, people. The more you drink, more clients I have. <laughs> I don't just do criminal defense, though. I recently started uh, something called the Suing the Government on the California Public Records Act, which is just about the best thing ever. Because if the government has something that someone asked for, and the government's like, we're not going to give you those documents, you can sue them. And not only do you get the documents, if you prevail, the government has to pay you attorney fees. So it's like, I can get secrets from the government and, get, and the government pays me to do it. That's like the opposite of blackmail. It's like neon mail. I'm not saying white mail, it's the opposite of blackmail, it's totally racist. I'm not falling into that trap again. Um, and so I did, I did, I did have ambitions though. So I, I'm actually liking what I do right now as a lawyer, but I um, do a lot of pro bono work. There's a lot of need for pro bono work in the asylum right now, you can imagine. Um, I did try to volunteer, anyway, but, um, so I do some volunteer work and that's nice. Like Frank already talked about it, like, you know, for the homeless and stuff, but I want to do important things, you know, law cases that would maybe get into history books, like, you know, Brown versus Topeka, or maybe get in like at least a law textbook. Now I got dreams of making my rent. Most of what I do is making the world safe for annoying texters. You probably don't know this, but you can get in tr trouble for a single text message. I had a client facing nine years in prison for one text message. Now granted, it was a horrific fucking text message. <laughs> like it's okay to be lonely. It's okay to be sad if a girl breaks up with you. It is not okay to text her, I'm probably gonna murder you. <laughs> <laughs> I like that probably, you know, give or take, I might flip a coin. <laughs> All right, so I'm defending him and I actually Got the case dismissed because I'm good at my job. And, um, <laughs> but the problem is under California law, that's called a criminal threat if it has a certain amount of specificity. You can't say something straightforward like, I'm gonna kill you. So what you need to say to interject a little ambiguity is something like, there's a small but statistically significant probability something horrible is gonna happen to you in the next three years. <laughs> or if you wanna get a little bit more obscure, a little more recherche, a little more nerdy. You might say something like, vis-a-vis -vis our recent breakup, your existence resembles that of Schrodinger's cat. <laughs> Give it a moment. <laughs> and that concludes the quantum physics section of our great terror set tonight. <laughs> now, in LA, we can be pretty shallow. I mean, not Orange County shallow. We can be pretty shallow. <laughs> and there's a tendency to judge yourself on the quality or the attractiveness of the person you're with. And that is a horrible way to judge yourself. I mean, not you, because you're great, but. 
but the, but, yeah, that, that's got really awkward. Let's not deal with that. Let's pass on. So, work with me, guys. Anyway, so the way to judge yourself is that's not because it's shallow, because it's inaccurate. If you really want to judge yourself, judge yourself by the guy she leaves you for. That provides you a really accurate level of how you're doing. Like, she leaves you for a guy who just put, stole a screenplay, just got a million dollars in the bank. You're doing all right. You're punching your weight. If she leaves you for a homeless drug dealer, you might friend have some work to do. <laughs> Full disclosure, I've been left for a homeless drug dealer. <laughs> Yet more complete disclosure, I've been left for two homeless drug dealers. <laughs> not the same homeless drug dealer, two different girls, two different drug dealers. There's not some homeless drug dealer just following me around being like, hey, that's got a new girl. This is great. <laughs> hey, baby doll, I got some new kush kush. Anyway, that's what I said for tonight. You can find me at DougXComedy.com, D-O-U-G, letter X, comedy.com. <laughs>